Umar Ashraf. That's him in the Lamborghini right there. He's a trader. He's been trading for 10 years. He trades futures, stocks. Um, he's real popular on YouTube. But I want to go over a video that he dropped. Eight trading rules to become a profitable trader in 2024. Um, we're going to go ahead and review that. And like I said, he's pr pretty popular over, I think, 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. But there's one thing he's missing. And I'm going to show you what that one thing is. I was actually watching another one of his videos surprising my parents with a $4 million house. Go ahead and take a look at this. Like I said, he's missing one key ingredient from his countdown on eight things to make you a profitable trader. And that's very important. And I'm going to show you how I use that one thing that he's missing to make a good amount of money last week, the week before that, and so on. So this is gonna be a reaction style video. I'll jump in and let you know what I disagree with and why I disagree with it and stay to the end because he actually is missing one. He has eight things, but there's also a nine that you need. All right, let's get into it. The first thing, which is the most important thing, is have a playbook, have a strategy, right? You need to have a well-defined system, well-defined edge in the market that allows you to make money. If you don't have this, it will make it very, very difficult for you to be profitable. All right, I agree with that. You definitely want to have an exit plan. A lot of people get in there and they just YOLO. Okay, for me personally, depending on what size account I'm trading, if I'm trading a uh, 100K account, Obviously, I'm using the bread and butter program along with multiple funny accounts. Um, if I'm trading a hundred thousand dollar account, I'm looking for anywhere between eight hundred to a thousand dollars per account. So when I once I hit that, it's time to log off and, and take that profit because that's what I'm shooting for. You only get these opportunities uh, during the daytime, certain period of times. Anything else than that is extra, but you want to lock in your profit. So I do agree with that one. Now, once you have these rules early on, you have to understand that the rules will not really make sense. You don't have real backing for these rules. And in order to back these and make sense of them, you must back test. You have to back test the strategy. You have to back test the rules. You have to refine that system. Once well, the back testing thing is real controversial, at least with me. I really don't back test. What I do is based on the trading program, again, we do front testing. We only trade um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Monday morning usually is chaos going on. You just got out of the weekend. So we use that to watch the market and have our trading plan play out based on what the indicators that we you supplied with the uh, bread and butter trading program. So we call it front facing or live testing in the market. You don't, you're not trading. You're just looking at to see, okay, this is what my indicators are telling me. Does, will this happen at this specific time? And you just go off of that. So we use Monday for the setup. Obviously, if you got a week with a whole bunch of news coming out, it's definitely going to affect the day before and probably the day after that news is going to come out. When something big like CPI is leading up to that, those few days in front of that, it's not going to, this might be choppy the day of or the day before. So you really can't count that. So, you know, you could do back testing, but I just don't want you to rely on that because there's all types of fundamentals that's going on with the market. But with those indicators, they'll tell you, hey, this looks good and you can practice on what you see on a day you're not actually trading in the market. Instead of back testing, you don't know what kind of news event was while you're rewinding and playing that. You don't know what kind of news event affect that record, you know, that you're looking at. So let's continue. And with that strategy or playbook, you have to make sure you stay consistent with it, right? So a lot of traders I see, they develop a strategy, but they change it every day. They don't have clear criteria. They don't I agree with that also. If you're learning something, stick with it, you know. A lot of people have, you know, they follow candlestick patterns or whatever. Everybody's following the candlestick pattern. So to an extent, you will make money with that. But after a while, you have to do something else more solid. Like I said, with the program that I'm in and um, that I've joined a long time ago, um, the, the, the main thing is consistency. That's what that's what makes this better than any program out there. Being consistent. And you'll see later on in this video, you'll see what I did for the week. And you can see his almost cookie cutter on the amount of money I make and how it was done in the times that it was done in. You know, anything other than that is extra. I can go into the market on Friday and, and a lot of times I do. But whatever I make on Friday or whatever I do, that's extra. I already locked in my profits for the week and I'm sticking to whatever I have. You have this new trading plan that comes up on uh, Instagram or whatever. I don't care about that. I'm sticking with bread and butter. And that's why it's known as that bread and butter. I stick with that. So let's continue. I have clear uh, use cases for that strategy that makes sense. They're adjusting every day depending on how they feel or what they feel. Right. And that's not what you want to do. You want to have a clear cut system that is well tested, that is defined and then use it.
The next thing is journaling. Now, I know a lot of people hate the concept of journaling when it comes to trading, but I promise you that journaling and tracking your data is one of the most crucial aspects of becoming a... I totally, totally disagree with journaling because some people, they are better journalers than they are traders. Me, I'm, you can start off doing this. You can journal all you want to, but even my wife, when I started trading, she bought me all kinds of journals. Those things are catching dust right now. Um, they're... Uh, digital journals, login, uh, journaling, you can do that to a certain extent if you're totally new to trading and everything. But for me, if I can't remember, hey, I did this on this date, I, I don't need to be trading. If I can't have a memory, if my I train my memory to be better on things I want to remember. So if I know I jumped in the market and my, in, my setup was already, I missed it probably half an hour ago and I still jump in the market and I lose money, I don't need a journal to tell me that, hey, you should not have traded. That's that's just my opinion. If it helps out for you, if you're a more analytical person, you need to see your mistakes. For me, this is big big boys. You lose, you know why you lost. You know you got up late. You know you you had a headache or you got in an argument or something was wrong and you shouldn't have not traded that day. I don't need a journal to do that. You guys, sometimes uh, people are saying it's because they have uh, maybe they have a, a journaling product they want to sell you or something like that. But for me. Journey is not a big deal. I have a good memory. I need to be at this level mentally when I'm trading. I need to remember what my mistakes are. So let's continue. The losses will catch up to you. Now, if you want to start journaling, I have a link down below for Tradezilla. Check it out. Ha ha ha. What did I tell you? He has a, a product, nothing against him, that has, you know, you know, some people want journaling. He has a product for it. That's why he, I guess he was preaching that because, hey, it may be work for him, but for me, I need to know and mentally in my head what I'm doing. I don't need to look at a paperwork or whatever. You're going to have 18 years of journaling paper sitting everywhere. You're not going to look through all that. You need to be spending your time flexing your muscle in the market and doing repetition, you know, getting in there and actually fighting the fight, not practicing. You know what I'm saying? It's different from practicing uh, whatever Taekwondo or whatever MMA than actually getting in the ring with an actual person that's trying to rip your head off. So that's what the market's trying to do. Every morning when that bell rings, that's the start of the fight. It's, you're trying to get, they're trying to bankrupt you. So you need to get in there and really tussle. Let's continue. The next one is stop focusing on your PNL as an indication for success or not in the markets. I see a lot of beginner traders or be traders at all. They'll say, well, this month I didn't make a lot of money, so I traded bad. I had a red month or a flat month, so I'm a terrible trader. And I tell traders that don't take your PNL as a measure of your success in the markets, especially when you start out. I'm neutral on this one. I agree with him about the percent and loss. Don't look at that because it can discourage you. But also, I don't know if he's going to talk about it later on. A lot of people, especially with Forex, you get these, uh, you know, practice accounts and you get up there to give you 200000 or whatever it is to practice with. And you develop a delusion of grandeur because you made money in a practice account. That's not the real world. Like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. So the worst thing you can actually have is a practice account and actually do good and make money from it. And then you feel and you get into a real market and you get slapped around. And also, if you get into a real market and you happen to make a big win, that could be detrimental to your career for the whole your whole trading career because you feel like, hey, I know everything. You know, I made five thousand dollars with a hundred bucks, and that's actually uh, that probably can hurt you in the long run. So you know, looking at your profit and loss, yeah, you need to look at that, but don't base everything on that because you're going to be learning in the beginning. I'd say. Um, that's why I want to talk about, you know, some, the thing that he's missing out of his video later on, because the main thing is all these, the technique that we're talking about and we used, it works, but you have to be around. You have to survive, not blowing your account long enough to learn everything. Let's continue. My favorite one, risk. Keep your risk consistent. Risk is the most important part of trading, guys. It's, it's something that we have to keep in mind. I totally agree with that. Again, that's why this program is set up. The bread and butter program is set up for you're taking the same amount of risk spread over a, a large amount of accounts, right? So every day you're working on the fundamentals. You're not focused on oh, how much I lost, whatever. If you got a hundred thousand dollar funding account or whatever it is, you know your risk tolerance from that, and you know your profit target. So you don't have to do anything extra. You just wait there and wait for the perfect ride to come, the perfect wave. You get on that wave and then you get off. And then guess what? You got five accounts that just copy what you're doing. Voila, you keep going and it, and it builds up your momentum as far as mental. If you go in the market and you keep losing every day and get losing, 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 you can profit one day and by the end of the day, you're negative $1,000. That's going to destroy you. So consistency 
and being able to take home money and lock in um, the funding companies. Like we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that later. Let us, let's continue. The next thing to do is have a pre-market game plan before you take on any session. You need to have a routine. You need to have a system before any, every session. So every time before I take any trades or I start my trading day or session, whatever the case may be, I am looking at a game plan. I am. I totally agree with that. Trading plan for the one that I'm in. You get up. I have my alarm clock set for one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's just me. Automatic. I don't obviously I don't need the clock anymore. I just get up automatically um, for those days that I'm trading. If I'm not trading during this week, I take a week off or whatever. I don't worry about it. But one o'clock I get up. For me, that's much time I need because I want to get into London session. And London session from three to four, you might have the setup that we're looking for that we look for every day. So um, I get up at one o'clock to make sure everything's there. My computer's already booted up. I'm not, I didn't get a software update because all these little things can throw you off. Anything can throw you off. Your internet's down and you still try to go in and trade. You try to trade off your phone or some craziness. You need to set up a plan. You, when you, before you go to your regular job, if you're still working at a regular job, you don't show up, you know, five minutes before you need to be there. You keep doing that sooner or later, depending on what type of work you're doing. Sooner or later, if you don't have, hey, I need to call this person. I got to return emails or whatever. If you don't have that plan before you actually hit the clock and, and go, sooner or later, it's going to catch up with you. You're going to start missing stuff and, and things are going to start piling up on you. This is the same thing with your own business. This is your trading business. You treat it accordingly or even go above. So I totally agree. You need to have a game plan every morning. Get up, whatever you need, your cup of coffee, your breakfast. Make sure that's in, intact and you all have a normalcy, of a, a muscle reflex again that's going on. So let's continue. What you should not be doing is you should not wake up. First thing you do, open your laptop and put on a trade. That's not the way to go, guys. And I totally agree with that. It goes back to what I'm saying. If you're already off, I give you a perfect example. Um, one morning I woke up and I knew I, I was already in setup. I saw where the market was going and I got the indicator. I set my alarm clock for one o'clock, but I ended up missing. I didn't get up at one o'clock. I got up uh, at three and the move had already happened. I mean, it was pretty much the market was down like maybe three percent or something like that. What do I do? Do I just blast the whole day and don't do anything? I jumped into the trade and you don't have to guess what happened. Obviously, I lost. You know, I ended up recouping at the next point later on in the daytime. But who do I blame that? Was that a bad day? No, I created that. You know, I knew it was going to happen. I already knew, hey, you're down. The market's already down. It passed the point where you were supposed to jump in. I tried to jump in a ride that was already ending, you know, and that's what happens. You know, I was able, based on my experience, I knew I had another opportunity to come back and reverse that. Obviously, I ended up for, with profit for the day and obviously profit for the week. But that just goes to show you, I smile when I saw that. I'm like, I knew it was going to happen, but let me go in here. And I actually, I recorded that. You know, a lot of the stuff I record and I'll submit it to be put into the uh, bread and butter trading program um, so they can have it as a case study. You know, so a lot of stuff I put it in there. So, um, you know, whether they finish editing and put it in there or not, I don't know. But I submit it to them and they go ahead and uh, do what they need to do with it because you need also that in your training you don't just need updates and look what we did you also need look this is going to happen in this video and i'll show you why you're going to see this nobody's doing anything new everybody gets in the trade and goes against them everybody knows how to revert. everything nothing's new so there's something out there that happened to somebody that you can learn from all right let's continue you want to make sure you have a well-defined plan you want to make sure you're in the right state of mind and you are active to be able to put on trades and be able to think properly well, let's stop it right there. This video is getting a little long. So we're just going to get the last couple of points he had. It was pretty much the same thing, risk management, um, having a plan. But the one thing that he left out of this, that his whole empire started from, remember, he was in the uh, Lambo in the beginning. None of that came from what he's saying. It wouldn't happen without this. Funding, having money. If you think you're going to risk your own money to get to this level or any level, own money in the beginning, that's just a donation. That's just a learning curve. You might as well kiss that goodbye. You need to get funding. And the only company that I know that's US based that doesn't have a stand at the end, like Uzbekistan or somewhere, you don't know if you're even going to get paid if you get a live account, is in the bread and butter trading program and they're endorsed by the Shark Tank. What I mean, this is the guy from the Shark Tank right here. You can see him. He's endorsing the trading program and the, the funding company. And let me just show you what I did. With two $250,000 account, they're tied in the trade copier. As you can see right here, the first account, I'm going to highlight this. As you can see, the market's live. No need to refresh. The market was live when I filmed this. You can see this ends in 3.5. And right there, you can see the total. And I'm going to show you the profit for today. The profit for today 
was a little bit over four thousand dollars you can see that right here so that's a little bit over four thousand dollars for this for this particular account and now we're going to go to the other account so i can show you that one that one's going to end in uh three six so this is only ends in three six you can see there's a different account they're both tied to each other so when i trade in one account it copies to the other one and i made an additional four thousand dollars on this one too a little bit over four thousand dollars so for the week as you can see the account's two hundred and two hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars so for the week each account had eight thousand dollar profit that's sixteen thousand for the week and i'm gonna go to and explain why that's a big deal and you should be paying attention right now so let me just go through and explain the magnitude of what you just saw all right we had uh we made eight thousand dollars from each account and we had two accounts obviously that was sixteen thousand per week that almost automatically puts you in the top ten percent of united states earners and that's four four weeks in a month you got sixty four thousand a month a month now but let me just show you this. I usually trade a little bit more accounts. Let's say $8,000 per account. We're saying consistently, we got five accounts now. $40,000 a week. A week, my friend. Now you see why I don't make videos every day. Now you see why I don't have a boot camp or anything like that. That's $160,000 a month. But again, I trade more accounts than this. Let's say we go for 10 accounts. 10 accounts, same effort. $8,000, that's $80,000 a week. A week, my friend four weeks in a month what do we got three hundred and twenty thousand i automatically take off half the taxes 160 guys do what you need to do